Hi, and welcome to Mormon Facts. The Word of Wisdom is referred to by LDS members as the Lord's Law of Health, in which specific food and drink are either encouraged or prohibited. Today, access to the LDS temples are gated by strict obedience to what is taught in the Word of Wisdom. However, not all items in the Word of Wisdom are followed by the modern LDS Church, and the understanding and adherence to the recommendations found in the Word of Wisdom haven't always been the same. The Word of Wisdom was written by Joseph Smith in Kirtland, Ohio on February 27, 1833. Today, it can be read as Section 89 of the Doctrine and Covenants. David Whitmer recounted the creation of the Revelation by saying, Some of the men were excessive chewers of the filthy weed tobacco, and their disgusting slobbering and spitting caused Emma Smith to make the ironical remark that it would be a good thing if a revelation could be had declaring the use of tobacco a sin and commanding its suppression. The matter was taken up and joked about. One of the brethren suggested that the revelation should also provide for the total abstinence from tea and coffee drinking, intending this as a counter dig at the sisters. Sure enough, the subject was afterwards taken up in dead earnest, and the word of wisdom was the result. The word of wisdom begins with verse 2 reading, The word of wisdom is sent, not commandment or constraint, which is to say that it is a recommendation, not a law or commandment. Verses 12 and 13 make clear recommendations concerning the consumption of meat. Yea, flesh also of beasts and of fowl of the air, I the Lord have ordained for the use of man with thanksgiving. Nevertheless, they are to be used sparingly. And it is pleasing unto me that they should not be used, only in time of winter or of cold or famine. Despite these clear outlines for meat consumption, these passages seem to be completely ignored by the modern LDS Church as teaching of eating meat sparingly is not taught in the church today. The consumption of caffeine is not mentioned in the Word of Wisdom. However, in 1973, the First Presidency issued a statement saying, with reference to cola drinks, the church has never officially taken a position on this matter, but the leaders of the church have advised, and we do now specifically advise, against the use of any drink containing harmful habit-forming drugs under circumstances that would result in acquiring the habit. Any beverage that contains ingredients harmful to the body should be avoided. LDS members interpreted this to be a ban on caffeine, and culturally, the prohibition continues today. However, in 2012, the church issued another statement saying, the church revelation spelling out health practices does not mention the use of caffeine. Verses 6 through 17 of the Word of Wisdom make references to strong drinks, hot drinks, and mild drinks. What are these referring to? In the April General Conference of 1868, Elder George Q. Cannon said the following, we are told, and very plainly too, that hot drinks, tea, coffee, chocolate, cocoa, and all drinks of this kind are not good for man. We must not permit them to drink liquor or hot drinks or hot soups, or to use tobacco or other articles that are injurious. Active LDS members will recognize many of these prohibited items, except hot chocolate, cocoa, and hot soup, which are not prohibited in the modern LDS church. Today, some LDS members imply that the word hot drinks is a euphemism for alcoholic drinks. However, that is not the case. So why does the Word of Wisdom and early church records prohibit hot drinks that are not alcoholic? To understand these questions, we need to look at the historical context of the times in which Joseph Smith lived. In 1748, a Methodist founder named John Wesley advocated a complete abstinence against tea, claiming that drinking tea gave rise to numberless disorders, particularly those of a nervous kind. Joseph Smith was a Methodist growing up and would have been influenced by these teachings that were commonly accepted during that time in the U.S. In a book written in 1706 titled Wholesome Advice Against the Abuse of Hot Liquors, it taught that moderate consumption of hot drinks could be beneficial. An excess of hot drinks caused the blood and insides to heat up and that excess of heat is the most common cause of sickness and death. Of course, these teachings are not accepted by modern medicine as drinks that are hot are not perceived as being a health risk. The Word of Wisdom also mentions mild drinks, which is often skipped over when taught by the LDS Church. The mention of mild drinks found in verse 17 mentions that drinks made from barley are permittable. This is very clearly referencing beer as it is produced from the fermentation of barley. In general, mild drinks at the time were referred to as beer, wine, and hard cider. Verse 10 of the Word of Wisdom reads, And again, verily I say unto you, all wholesome herbs God hath ordained for the constitution, nature, and use of man, which ex-Mormons often joke as being in reference to cannabis. On this point, the church leadership has been unified in its complete vilification of cannabis. However, in the late 1800s, nearly 400 Mormon settlers were established in the northwest of Mexico. 
Over the time, the use of cannabis within these communities became more popular, and when those communities came back to Utah in 1910, they brought with them their cannabis habits. This new threat so alarmed the LDS Church that in 1915, Utah became the first state to pass an anti-marijuana law banning the use of the substance within the state. Today, the word of wisdom is obeyed strictly by active LDS members, but this was not always the case. Abraham H. Cannon was a member of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles in Nauvoo, and in his journal he recounted a story. Joseph Smith tried the faith of the saints many times by his peculiarities. At one time, he had preached a powerful sermon on the word of wisdom, and immediately thereafter he rode through the streets of Nauvoo smoking a cigar. Joseph Smith also attempted to install a bar in his Nauvoo mansion. However, while Joseph and Porter Rockwell were setting up the bar, Joseph's wife Emma Smith came home and was so upset she issued an ultimatum declaring that either the bar left or she and the children would. Smith then removed the bar from their home but continued the sale of alcohol in Nauvoo. Later, in Salt Lake City, breweries and distilleries were set up in earnest. Brigham Young controlled the production of alcohol as it was a way of controlling vast amounts of money in the valley. Salt Lake City funds were used to purchase liquor from Brigham Young for Pioneer Day, and the Deseret News also reported that the city continued to buy liquor from Brigham Young at $4 per gallon. When Brigham Young was urged to make the word of wisdom a test of Mormon fellowship, he replied, I do not think that I shall do so. In 1902, the church president Joseph F. Smith urged local church leaders leeway with the old men and their tobacco and old women with their tea. However, general consumption of wine, beer, and coffee were still drank without any religious blemish. In the 1920s, the National Temperance Movement was gaining traction in the U.S., and the church president, Heber J. Grant, aligned official church policy with those goals for the first time. Then, one year later, in 1921, Heber J. Grant changed temple attendance to be gated by strict adherence to the Word of Wisdom. Since that time, modern LDS members have followed the Word of Wisdom with strict obedience. Today, the Word of Wisdom seems like a 19th century byproduct that has spilled over into an age where it now seems obsolete and antiquated. However, LDS church members will not agree, believing that the true principle of the Word of Wisdom is one of obedience. In the 1983 April General Conference, Ezra Taft Benson said, I have always felt, however, that the greater blessing of obedience to the Word of Wisdom and all other commandments is spiritual. Thanks so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please press the like button and subscribe to be updated with more videos from Mormon Facts.